The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike meat, fine tobacco, richer tasting, fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. This is Don Wilson, friends. Let's take a good close look at the subject of why you smoke cigarettes. Think it over a minute, and you'll agree that the main reason, and probably the only reason you smoke, is simply that you enjoy it. You like the taste of a cigarette. Sure, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother, for two very important reasons. One is, LS, MFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The tobacco in Lucky's is fine, naturally mild, good tasting. Another reason for this better taste is that Lucky's are actually made better, made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. Fine tobacco in a better made cigarette gives you better taste every single time. So if you go along with me that smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste, then be happy, go Lucky, because the fact of the matter is Lucky's taste better. Get a carton of Lucky Strike and see for yourself. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don. Ladies and gentlemen, many times in the past I've opened this program by taking you out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills. But tonight, just for a change, let's all go out to Mr. and Mrs. Bob Crosby's house on the edge of Beverly Hills. Many times, many times I have wanted your kiss. Many times, many times... Oh, Bob, Bob. Yes, June? You've been in the den here for an hour. What are you doing? Well, just rehearsing some songs, dear. I'm thinking of making another personal appearance. Personal appearance? Where? Las Vegas. Oh, Bob, I wish you wouldn't. You remember what happened last time we were up there. You gambled every night and lost quite heavily. Oh, I know. Well, don't do it again. I miss the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Really, Bob, I'm serious. I wish you wouldn't play another personal appearance. Well, why not, dear? Well, you're so busy. You're on Mr. Benny's show every week. You play benefits. You make records. And you have your own TV show five days a week. You're never home anymore. Oh, June, you're exaggerating. Oh, Mother. Mother. Yes, dear? Can I go to the park and play ball? Certainly. Okay, I'll be back in time for dinner. Say, Mom. Yes, dear? Who's this guy, the plumber? (laughs) <laughs> He's your father Well, certainly I'm your father Don't you recognize me, Chris? I'm Steve <laughs> oh? uh, You run along, Steve And be home in time for dinner I will Goodbye, Mother Goodbye, Dad <laughs> Goodbye, goodbye She's grown. <laughs> you know, honey, I could have sworn he was Chris. Gosh, you know, June, I've been thinking about what you said, though, and I think I'm going to forget about personal appearances and spend more time at home. Oh, Bob, I wish you would. I will, and not only that, I think... Why don't we have a dinner party here at home like we used to? Oh, that would be wonderful. How about next Saturday night? That's fine. I'll invite all the boys in my band and their wives and... And you know what, June? I think we ought to invite Jack Benny, too. You do? Why, certainly. Oh, but, Bob, he's such an important man, and he's so busy. You, you can't call and invite him to dinner on such short notice. Well, I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> Bob, I think you're making a big mistake. Now, don't you worry, June. I've got an idea. Look, we'll change the date of our dinner to fit Jack's convenience. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Bob Crosby. Oh, hello, Bob. Say, Jack, June and I would like to invite you to our house for dinner, and, well, when would it be uh, possible for you to come? 
Oh, seven o'clock, seven fifteen. <laughs> In fact, I, I can be over right now. Well, we weren't thinking of tonight. We were thinking of some night this week. Which would be the most convenient? Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, Friday. Well, you skipped Thursday. Oh, I, I babysit that night. <laughs> oh. I used to do it for you, but you lost your kid in Las Vegas. <laughs> I know, I know. But, Jack, how about coming over for dinner Saturday night? Oh, so, oh, fine, Bob, fine. Say, and after dinner, we can have some fun, you know, play gin or Scrabble. Oh, no, thank you, Jack. I'll never play Scrabble with you again after last Sunday's game. You're too tricky for me. I don't know how in the world you do it. Do what? Well, there are only two Y's in the game, and yet you made the word money 11 times. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, we'll play something else. So long. See you Saturday. So long, Jack. Goodbye, Bob. Gee, it was nice of Bob to invite me over to his house for dinner. He's always doing things like that. Having people over for dinner, taking them out to nightclubs, having parties. He's so generous. He ought to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> well, when Rochester comes home for shopping, I better tell him I won't be home for dinner Saturday night. Gee, he's been at that market a long time. Coming, coming. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Come on in. Thanks. I wasn't expecting you today, Dennis. Anything wrong? No, I just wanted to ask you a favor. Could you lend me $10? $10? Yes, I, I guess so. What do you want it for? I want to get myself tattooed. <laughs> Tattooed? Why? Well, I was in the Navy during the war, and yet nobody will believe I was a sailor. <laughs> well, what are you going to have tattooed on you? My uniform. <laughs> well, that's about the... Si Look, kid, if you want something tattooed on you to show that you were in the Navy, why don't you have a life preserver or an anchor? Or wait a minute, how about the battleship Missouri? No, my mother has that. <laughs> Your mother has a battleship tattooed on her? When she wears a corset, it looks like it's sinking. <laughs> hey, say, wait a minute, kid. I've got a good idea. Why don't you do what I did when I was in the Navy? Have the American flag put on your arm. Gee, I didn't know you had the American flag on you. Yeah, I had it done the first day I joined the Navy. Wait, I'll roll up my sleeve and show it to you. See? See? Gee, only 13 stars. <laughs> yes, Dennis, only 13 stars, but not for the reason you think. I made the man stop because he was hurting me. Then why did he put them in a circle? <laughs> Dennis, I don't want to get into any more discussions with you. Now I'll make you a proposition. Yeah, what? If I lend you the $10, will you let me hear the song you're going to do on next Sunday's program and leave immediately? Yes, sir. Okay, here's the $10. What song are you going to sing? My brand new RCA Victor recording of Hey Brother, Pour the Wine. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> We sit enjoying the shade. Hey, brother, pour the wine. Drink the drink that I have made. Hey, brother, pour the wine. Tell you why the day is sunny. I'm in love with lips of honey. Wait till you see the way she walks. Hey, brother, pour the wine. Is coming here to stay. Hey, brother, pour the wine. I have waited for this day. Hey, brother, pour the wine. She writes of love in every letter. Others have tried, but I will get her. Wait till you see the way she walks. Hey, brother, pour the wine. What is life? What is spring? What are all the stars that shine? Love, my friend, is everything. And love will soon be more. 
forward as quickly as you can. Hey, brother, for the wife. Pour it quickly once again. Hey, brother, for the wife. She's here at last, my one and only goodbye friends. Don't be lonely when you see the way she walks. Hey, brother, for the wife. Hey, brother, for the wine, hers was never meant to last. Hey, brother, for the wine, she introduced me to another. No, my friends, he's not her brother. I will miss the way she walks. Hey, brother, pour the wine. Pour it as quickly as you can. Hey, brother, pour the wine. Pour it quickly once again. Hey, brother, pour the wine. Pour the wine. Pour the wine. Hey, brother. Wonderful song you recorded. It should sound swell on the program. Oh, thanks. Now go get yourself tattooed. Okay, Mr. Benny. You know, uh, you know what I think I'll do? I'll have them Dennis, tattoo. Look, a... You promised me if I lent you the ten dollars, you wouldn't say anything. You just go. Yes, sir. Okay, then go. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, that Dennis gets sillier and sillier every day. I don't know how I've stood him all these years, but it's my own fault. I should have known when I first saw him there was something wrong with him. <laughs> what other man wears a size three hat? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I think... Mr. Benny, I'm back from the market. Good. I'm in the kitchen putting the things away. I'll come in and help you. Hey, what took you so long, Rochester? Well, I had a lot of things to do. You know, I took all the hamburger out of the freezer, sold it, and bought 36 quarts of milk. Why'd you do that? Beef went up, milk went down. I'm playing the market. <laughs> Say, Rochester, what's this? A head of lettuce. How can this be lettuce? It's pure white. The fat is over. They're taking chlorophyll out of everything. <laughs> Oh. By the way, Mr. Benny, are you going out tonight? No, I think I'll stay home and practice my violin. Your violin? Oh, boss, calm now. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll wait till you get out of the house. Meanwhile, I'm going in the den and read for a while. Okay. <coughs> Gee, I haven't read a book in a long time. Let's see what's here. Vaudeville by Joe Laurie, Jr., Look Who's Abroad Now by Earl Wilson. Here's a book I haven't read. 100 Famous Poems. You haven't read poetry in a long time. I think I'll read this. <clears throat> Let's see. See, they have some wonderful poems in this book. Charge of the Light Brigade, the Owatha, The Wreck of the Hesperus, Ganga Din. There was an old lady from... Whoops, somebody penciled that in. <laughs> oh, here's one of my favorite poems. I haven't read it in years. The Shooting of Dan McGrew. I think I'll read that. The Shooting of Dan McGrew by Robert W. Service. A bunch of the boys were whooping it up in the Malamute Saloon. The kid that handles the music box was hitting a jag time tune. Hey, bartender. 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 Yeah? I want a drink of whiskey. 
Okay, how much whiskey do you want? About three fingers. Here you are. Ha! Give me another drink. How much this time? Oh, about four fingers. Okay. There you are. Four fingers of whiskey. Ha! You know, mister, you're the first man I ever saw drink out of a glove. <laughs> the only man in Alaska that got a hangnail with a hangover. <laughs> oh, gone, I've been trapped in this saloon for eight days by that darn blizzard. How much longer do you think it'll last? I don't know. Well, I'm going to take a look outside and see how the weather is. it outside? Cloudy. <laughs> Look, bartender, being stuck in a place like this for eight days can drive a guy nuts. I gotta have a little excitement. Tell you what, I'll bet you five dollars I can shoot those three glasses off the top shelf in three shots. Five dollars says you can't. It's a bet. Stand back, everybody. <laughs> There's one. There's two. You lost. No, I didn't. I've got $20 more that says you did. It's a bet. <laughs> that slow bullet has made me a fortune. <laughs> Anybody else want a bet? Hey, you at the piano. Don't you know any other music? No, nah, he's ignorant. But those fur or uh, four fur trappers in the corner. <laughs> those you must four... have had five fingers yourself. <laughs> I see those four fur trappers in the corner. They can sing some songs. Well, let's hear some. <laughs> okay, take it, fellas. Jette the plume array la tête, light a lucky alouette. Jette the plume array la tête, light a lucky alouette. Alouette, alouette, cigarette, cigarette. Ah, alouette, a proper cigarette. Made a fine tobacco, ooh la la. Alouette, jette alouette. Wrote a letter to her dear papa. Here is what the letters say. Send more luckies right away. Son of a gun, but Eskimos, they smoke luckies too, you know. Eskimo. Eskimo. Smoke, you know. Smoke, you know. Alouette. Alouette. Cigarette. Cigarette. They all like. They all like. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. Oh, Alouette, pop a cigarette. She is just as happy as can be. We so luckies made a fine tobacco. Living mid the ice and snow, we're so very glad to know. She's as happy as can be. We said LSMFT. MFT. MFT. We agree. We agree. Eskimo. Eskimo. Smoke, you know. Smoke, you know. Alouette. Alouette. Cigarette. Cigarette. They all like. They all like. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. Ah, Alouette. Pop a cigarette. Through the long and lonesome Arctic nights. In the north, so many light of luckies. That's what makes the northern mark. Well, how'd you like the song? That was Say See Good. <laughs> Hey, look, mister, the blizzard is letting up. Yeah, well, I think I'll get going. Where's my partner? Hey, Wilson! Wilson! Here I am. Come on, we're going up north to find gold. Gold, do you hear me? Gold. Just a minute, partner. Don't risk your life out there in these icy wastes looking for gold. What is gold? Can't eat it? Can you drink it? Gold's only money. The money will only bring you unhappiness, misery, and sorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
you mind repeating that? <laughs> Money will only bring you unhappiness, misery, and sorrow. This boy is not only fat, but he's stupid. <laughs> now, come on, let's get the dogs ready and the sled. We're going. mountains hemmed you in with a silence you could hear, with only the howl of a timber wolf, and you camp there in the cold, a half-dead thing in a stark dead world, clean mad for the muck called gold. We're going mighty slow, Wilson, and it's all your fault. I took you on as a partner because I was a greenhorn. You told me you knew everything about the Yukon. You told me you knew how to handle these dog teams and sled. Of course I do. What makes you think I don't? Well, I have a feeling the dog should be pulling the sleds and we should be riding. <laughs> I'm sure of it. And that cocker spaniel with the whip is murder. <laughs> that dog yells mush at me once more, there's gonna be trouble. Gee, I can't stand this no more. Three weeks we've been traveling through these frozen wastes. I hey, wish look, I... wait a minute. Comes huh? a man. An Eskimo. Oh, yeah. I'll go and talk to him. Won't do any good. These Eskimos don't talk any English. I know, but I talk Eskimo. I'll say hello to him. Hey, Kumpare! <laughs> That's Eskimo? <laughs> look, he's coming toward us. And he's carrying food. Yeah, maybe he'll give us some, blubber. <laughs> I mean, maybe he'll give us some blubber. <laughs> hey, he wants to talk to us. Oogie, oogie, wah, wah, maga, hoo, maga, he. What'd he say? What'd he say? He says he's, his name is a mighty hunter and he's chief of an Eskimo tribe. Oh. Ask him if he'll be our guide and lead us to the goal. Mugla, Mugliuka, Takara, Iglu. Marabu, Oogie, Gloob, Nagikuch, Tigra. Of my riders must come from Bismo Beach or something. <laughs> nuggy Nuggy talking. He says he can't be a guide. He's got something else to do. Ask him what. Oogie Tula Nagarari. Taka Lugi Moogie Papoos Nunga Wawa. What'd he say? He's got to go to Las Vegas and pick up his kid. <laughs> Let's go on by ourselves. Goodbye, Eskimo. Goodbye, and don't forget dinner Saturday night. <laughs> Ow! Come on, let's go. <laughs> Mush! I'm pulling it! I'm pulling it! <laughs> Wait a minute, Wilson, look. Look at the side of that mountain. We found it, a vein of pure gold. Do you hear me, Wilson? Look at it. Pure gold. Oh, boy, am I unhappy, miserable, and sorry. <laughs> Come on, Wilson. Let's dig that gold and go back to the saloon. Back of the bar in a solo game sat dangerous Dan McGrew. Now, watching his luck was his light of love, the lady that's known as Lou. Went out of the night, which was 50 below, and into the din and glare. There stumbled a miner fresh from the creeks, dog dirty and loaded for bear. Okay, bartender. I struck it rich. Set up drinks for everybody. Does that include me, handsome? <laughs> it sure does, Lou. I came right back here after finding the gold just to see you. Well, the minute I heard you was coming, I hurried home and got into this new dress. You must have been in a hurry. <laughs> you didn't get all the way into it. <laughs> but, Lou, I got presents for you now that I'm rich. 
I got diamonds and ermine furs, a 54 convertible, a platinum mine, jewels, and a yacht for you. Oh, darling. Just call me Santa Baby. <laughs> oh, you're so wonderful. Come here, honey. Kiss me. <laughs> After that kiss, I won't need my dogs or my sled anymore. Why not? There ain't no more snow between here and the North Pole. <laughs> Give me another kiss, Lou. Sure, honey. I'll... Oh, wait a minute. Be careful. Here comes dangerous Dan McGrew. <laughs> Lou, come here a minute. Yes, Dan? Didn't I see you kissing this stranger a minute ago? Yes, you did. Hey, he sounds dangerous. <laughs> what know, about it? You know what I do to guys I catch kissing my gal? What? I cut off their heads and hang them up by their hair. Oh. I'll have to think of something different for you. <laughs> oh, I ain't scared. Now listen to me, Dan McGrew. Lou is my gal, and I'm taking her with me. Who oh, no, you're not. Draw your gun. Don't, don't fight, boys, please. Get out of the way, Lou. I'm ready, Dan. And I reached for my rod, and the lights went out, and two guns blazed in the dark. <laughs> and a woman screamed, and the lights went up, and two men lay stiff and stark. Bye, Steph. So long, Stark. <laughs> on his head and pumped full of lead was dangerous Dan McGrew while a man from the creeks lay clutched in the arms of the lady that's known as Lou. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first a word from one of the world's funniest men of letters, America's comic, poet laureate, Ogden Nash. Somebody once went through my poems and made a list of the things I dislike. It's a pretty long list, too. However, in the list of things I like, they said he likes good eating. Of course I like good eating. I like good anything, good fun, good smoking. Naturally, I smoke Luckies. To put it poetically, I hope I'm not a crank, but I've got one foible. I don't enjoy anything unless it's enjoyable. I'm pernickety about what I like, and for 30 years, I've smoked Lucky Strike. We agree with Ogden Nash about smoking enjoyment. It's all a matter of taste, and the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother, for two good reasons. First, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Second, Lucky's are made better to draw freely and smoke evenly. That, too, means better taste for you. So be happy. Go lucky. Pick up a carton and prove to yourself that Lucky's taste better. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. We're a little late, so good night, folks. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Hal Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. <laughs>